Hi there, and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we'll be looking at the solution to physics experiment ELSIS, which is the focal length of a convex lens by displacement method, all right? So the aim of this experiment is to determine the focal length of a convex lens. For this case, we'll be using a method called the displacement method. So the apparatus and procedures have been given here. But as usual, I'll just jump straight to um, the table of values and I'll show you how it's done. Okay. All right. So when you do this experiment, you'll be having this table of values after your experiment. All right. So I'll be showing you how to fill up this table. Now, first things first, observe that you have first reading of Mac, that's P1, second reading of Mac, P2, the displacement, capital D in centimeters of course everything here in centimeters and uh, preparation separation p1 minus p2 that's a small d here in centimeters then you have capital d squared minus small d squared your unit is centimeter squared so how do you fill up this part first things first we want to get the value of small d and how do we get the value of small d very simple it's usually p1 minus p2 now, P1, don't forget, they are the first reading of the mark. That's P1. Why P2 are the second reading of the mark? So, for the first row, this one here, let's fill up this. So, first things first, P1 minus P2. For the first row, P1 is 50 and P2 is 30. So, I'll have that P1 minus P2 become, so I'll have that P1 minus P2. It's equal to 50 minus 30. And that's equal to 20, of course, in centimeters. So the first one here, I have P1 minus P2 as 20, of course, in centimeters. Next up, to fill up this last row here, I have capital D squared. In this case, capital D squared in the first row is 80. So it becomes 80 squared, capital D. So capital D squared minus small d squared for the first row is equal to capital D is 80 squared minus if I look at this, the small d for the first row is 20, so it becomes minus 20 squared. If I subtract this, this gives you about 6,000. You can punch this. You have 6,000 centimeters squared as your answer. Okay. Now, for this one here, we've already... Um, okay. All right. So, you can see six. You can see the centimeters squared already here. So I'll just come here and write 6,000 as my answer. All right, so that's how we fill this up. Let's get to the second row. For the second row, P1 is 53 and P2 is 28. So let's get P1 minus P2. It becomes 53 minus 28. So I have 53 minus 28. Now, if I punch this 53 minus 28, I have... 25 as my answer so i have 25 here as my answer so i'll just come here and put this as 25 okay so let's now get d squared capital d squared minus small d squared in this second row the capital d squared is 85 and the small d or the capital d is 85 and the small d is 25 so it becomes 85 squared so i'm having 85 squared minus 25 squared and if i punch that 85 squared minus 25 squared gives you 6600 as your answer so i have this value here as 6600 all right so i'll just fill up this ones very fast you can just proceed the same way all right fill up your table now again i've always stressed this please do not copy my values all right just use this as a guidance to fill up your own table all right, so if I fill up this table here, I would have, this should give me about 34. This should give me about 42. This should give me about 48. This should give me about 57. So I have this. While here, this should give me about 6,944. I'll just follow the same procedure. This should give me about 7,261. This should give me 7,696. And this would give me about 7,776. All right, so I'll have these as my value. 
All right, so with this, I have successfully filled up this table. Now let's look at the next part, which is the question and answer session. So let's look at the next part, which is the questions, and see how we can answer the questions. All right, questions. Question one says, plot a graph of d squared minus d squared. That's capital D squared minus small d squared versus d. All right, and this d should actually be a small d. Is it capital D? So question one says, plot a graph of capital D squared minus small d squared versus d. All right, so basically it means that I'm plotting. Um, so basically it means that I'm plotting this one here on the vertical axis or the y axis versus this one here on the horizontal or x-axis. So these values here, I'll plot these values here on the vertical axis, right? That's this, um, these values here on the vertical axis, while these other values here, this one here, I'll plot these ones on the, while these ones here, I'll plot these ones on the horizontal axis, all right? So I'll choose a suitable scale and then I'll plot this graph. All right, so I've plotted this graph and I have this for my graph. Now you can see that for my graph here, you can look at this point. So you can see I have on this vertical axis, I have d squared minus small d squared or in cm squared. Also on the horizontal axis, I have d in centimeters. All right, this is centimeters squared. Of course, every graph should have two important parameters, the title and the scale. So the title of this graph would be graph, graph of, in bracket d squared minus d squared versus d of course you can put the units there in centimeters so this is the title of the graph for the scale you choose a suitable scale for yourself but from what i have in this graph from what i'm using here let me put my scale so every every graph must have a title and a scale used or scale whichever one but my skill here if i look at this from this point here up to this point is about one unit. So I'll say let one unit represent. Okay, so write in full. Represent in full. Represent from here going up here. It's like one unit, which is 500. So represents 500. The unit for the vertical axis, as you can see here, is about centimeter squared. So this centimeter squared on the the vertical axis here is actually d squared minus d squared axis that's vertical axis and and also let from here the origin to this point is t1 unit and let one unit represent so, so right represent in full represent from here to here is about 10 so it becomes 10 the unit of the horizontal axis as you see here is in centimeters represent 10 centimeters in the d capital d axis so i have this all right so this becomes my scale use right, so for your for your own um graph pick out a suitable scale i've showed you how i did mine here so pick out your suitable scale we can have we should have the same title so we should have the same title but for the scale pick out the scale suitable for your own graph all right all right, so let's plot this. So I've done this. I've gotten the title, I've gotten the scale, and I have this one here. So I have this as the um, graph work for the question. All right, so let's look at the next thing there. So for the first one, I've plotted this graph. The II says, what is the gradient of the graph? Now, gradient simply means slope. That it comes to getting the gradient of the slope. Uh, let me do this one here. I'll do it here. So the gradient, um, gradient, also called slope, it's equal to, the formula for this is equal to the change in the parameter on the vertical axis, which in this case, the vertical axis is this one here that becomes change in um, d squared 
minus d squared all over change in the parameter for the horizontal axis that's d right if you check this the horizontal axis is d so i have this all right so having said this this would now be equal to if i proceed with this this should give me about um d squared minus d squared this of two minus d squared capital d squared minus small d squared one divided by divided by capital d2 minus capital d1 so let's impute values if i impute values here this is equal to um so how do we take a slope for this um okay so i'll choose as usual we'll choose that point where you have the vertical line excuse me so for the slope you pick the point where you have your vertical line now remember that for your slope you pick the point where you have your vertical line like this and your horizontal line like this and then you now have the line you just drew using the using the um points from your graph something like this so it's where all of this meets like this point this point where these three lines meet here it's where you pick out as your values so let's go to the graph and pick out values if i go to the graph and pick out values what do i have so i'll come here let's try to get this point um i can take um this point here is good i'll take this point here also coming down i can take um i can take also this point here all right so i have this so what's the next tax here i will trace this these values to the left hand side what i have here which is 9000 9000 i have here is simply the value of d2 d squared capital d squared minus small d squared 2 that's about 9000 minus for the first one you come here this value here this place you picked trace it to the left to meet the vertical axis i have this point here which is 4000 so it becomes this minus this value is 4000 from what i traced all divided by d2 minus d1 so how do we get d2 simple from this same point you picked pick draw this down down if i trace this down having here as 120 that's 120 is the value of d2 so i have 120 minus for d1 for d1 i'll trace this down to so trace this down here it gives you about 50 so i have 50 as my values 50 all right so i'll go ahead and punch this if i go ahead and punch this i will have my answer as 71.4 or let's say 43 as my answer all right and the unit will be this one is in cm squared the upper one here is in cm squared all over the lower one here is in cm so if cm cancels cm squared i'm left with centimeters so this gives you 71.73 approximately centimeters so i have this but then if i look at this the software already calculated this as 71.34 centimeters all right so of course they are still close so you could choose to okay let's just go with our own solving so i have 71.43 as the gradient of the graph all right next question all right so this is about 71.43 cm as we got the next one says show that the gradient of the graph is related to the focal length of the lens all right now the the formula that relates the focal length to the gradient of the slope is that the focal length is always equal to 10 times the gradient or the slope that's it all right so focal length is 10 times the slope or the gradient that's your formula so i can say focal length f is equal to 10s right so you can just add the notes there uh, let me give you a note to write All right, so you can write this as number three that the focal length is 10 times the slope that's f is equal to 10s 
So I have this. All right, let's proceed. The last one says, deduce the focal length of the lens from your slope. That would be easy. We said the focal length F is equal to 10 times the slope. Now, from what we calculated, we got our slope as 71.43. So it becomes 10 times 71.43. In which if I multiply this, this gives you 714.3 in centimeters. So I have this. All right, so this is the answer. So basically, this is how you answer, or this is how you, um, yeah, this is how you answer the questions for experiment L6. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like the video, okay, and also leave a comment. Tell us if you enjoyed the video and also suggest other experiments you'd want us to make solution on. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if it's your first time and please ensure you share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in our next practical solution class.